I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to share this message of our Lord Jesus Christ, the message of the end time, the message that the Lord God Almighty gave me, and the vision of the hour to the church of God, to the bride of Christ, and to all people who want to see the kingdom of God. Therefore, I want to pray that I may start now giving this mighty revelation, the vision that I received from our God, and uh, I want to pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, my God and my Savior, Jehovah God of heaven and earth, you who is holy, you who is righteous, be glorified, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that you may bless this message, the vision, the vision that you gave me, the Father, that you may enlighten it unto our light and to our heart. May you give us the knowledge and the wisdom and the liberation that we may understand your word in Jesus' name. Mighty Father, I pray for your praises. I pray for your name to be glorified over this praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, God Almighty. Thank you, Jehovah God, because of your faithfulness, because of your power. In the mighty name of Jesus, do pray and believe. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to share this message, the vision of the coming storm. The Lord showed me, showed me uh, the vision of what is coming. And uh, in my vision, I saw a great and a gigantic storm which was coming. And this storm was coming with a mighty force. It was very powerful, a powerful force, a powerful uh, a crowd, like a storm, coming like a tornado. The way you see, uh, you can see the way that, 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 that um, storm that, uh, that striked America, the way they, 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 they used to call it, they used to call it like weed, uh, like wheeling, wheeling weed, how the wheeling weed uh, used to call it itself. Now I saw a gigantic storm, a powerful and a violent storm which was coming. And uh, in my vision, I saw that this storm was learning, uh, was, was moving very fast. And uh, that voice, uh, the, that storm was indeed moving and moving and, and, uh, and going around the world. And I saw that storm that whenever it passed by, there was damage. There was violent. There, there, there was damage, and uh, because it was very a devastating, a devastating storm, so there were damage wherever it was passing by. And I saw that force, that storm, that huge storm coming, coming. It was very uh, fearful and uh, violent storm that I have ever seen, because it came. Then uh, it was above me. Then when it was coming. I bent down like that and I called my God and I said, O oh God of Israel, O oh God of Jacob, let this storm pass out away from me. And I saw that, uh, that, that crowd, that storm, that great storm passing by and it passed uh, 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 away from me and went uh, ahead. Then I understood that this is the time of the storm. That is why. I want to share this message, this revelation, describing and saying what the, that storm means. Because it was very a gigantic storm, a very powerful one, a very violent one, and a very fearful storm that was coming. It was very great and a devastating storm that I have never seen before. Then, that is when I understood that God is saying indeed that there is a uh, that there is a storm a great storm that is coming to storm the church of God a great storm that is coming and going all through the world shaking and shaking and sweeping those who are weak those who are not standing God is sending that thing God is sending that storm so that it may shake those who are sleeping and those who are not sleeping it will, it will differentiate between those who are sleeping and those who are not sleeping. This is the hour that God is saying that the end time storm has been released. The storm of the end time, the storm of shaking. Like how you see that when disciples were sleeping, they were sent the storm. That that time, then Jesus Christ, when they called Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ came and he came, he came that storm. Even so, God is saying that there is a storm that is coming to shake the nations. There is a storm that is coming to shake all the 
Christian. There is a storm that is coming to shake the church of God in this hour. So that they may now stand. They may call upon God in the, in the midst of this storm. Who knows? In this storm that is coming. That if this is the storm that is coming to take and to carry the children of God. To rapture the children of God. Who knows? what it means by this storm that I saw because it was a storm mixed with a uh, with a crowd crowd like wearing wood wearing wearing weed how the wearing weed uh, uh, is so it was coming and, and rotating itself like this and sweeping sweeping everywhere and it was very mighty very gigantic and very violent one a devastating storm that I had never seen before so who know that if this thing is coming with a rapture this is why God is saying that God is sending the storm to shake the church of God. The storm to awake the children who are sleeping. There will be testing. There will be trials. And when this storm will be coming, it will leave the people who are staying. It will leave other people standing and other people will be left uh, sleeping. Others will arise and others will sleep, will fall in this hour. This is the hour that God is calling the church of God because the end time storm has been sent in the church of God to shake the nations, to shake people violently so that they may wake, so that they may awake and come out from slumbering, come out from sleeping in this hour. I have seen a, such a great storm, but this storm does not pray. This storm it is very great, very giant one. Very, very great one, very mighty storm that is coming to shake people, that is coming to shake your life, that is coming to shake your family, that is coming to shake your marriage, your ministry, and the church as well, so that they may be awakened, they may know he is a living God, Jehovah. Why? Because we are in the critical hour. We are in the end times when Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ is near. He is coming to take his bride. So God is calling all the people to stand still because the time of storm is coming and the time of storm is near. Hallelujah. I want to give to say now, how could you, how can you do? Now how will you do when the storm is coming? In this time of teaching, uh, in this time, I want to give this teaching, the teaching that's saying, the overcoming, how to overcome this storm because God is saying that we must be prepared because the storms are coming. We must be prepared because the shakings are coming. So you must know how to prepare yourself. You must know how to be ready. You must know how to be strong. You must know how to avoid this uh, falling in this hour of the storm. So I want to give three points about overcoming this storm because as a Christian, Wherever you are, the bride of Christ, all the worldwide, you need to stand and to uh, uh, to stand against this storm, to stand against this falling, to stand against this testing that is coming, and to be raptured and to be remaining and to remain brimless at this hour, because this is the hour of the storm. This is the hour of awakening. This is the hour of shaking. That that which cannot be shaken will remain. That which cannot be shaken will remain, and that which will fall when shaken, it will fall. Therefore, you need to be that which cannot, uh, that which, uh, that that which can be shaken, but will stand, but will not fall. Now, I want to give what we need to do in this hour. The point number one, it is prayer and fasting. You need to be fasting, dear brother. You need to be prayer in this hour of the storm. Because if you are not praying, if your life is not built in prayers, then you cannot stand the coming storm that is coming. You cannot stand the coming storms of trials, the coming storms of, uh, of persecution, the coming storm of hatred, the coming storms that are, are coming. You cannot overcome them if you are not prayerful. Every time we pray, we go, we draw near to God. We bring the presence of God near to us, and that presence alone, it is uh, that presence alone destroys the enemy and uh, 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 and uh, and it takes away the storm that will be may be coming in your life. Therefore, we need to be prayerful in this hour and to the to, to be people who are fasting because fasting will destroy fasting will destroy every kind of the uh, of, of the missions of the enemy fasting will make you strong fasting will make you powerful to overcome the storm that may be coming in your life 
Therefore, this is the, uh, the hour to be strong. This is the hour to stand in fasting, to stand in the prayers. Because it is the hour of shaking. It is the hour of the storms that are coming in our life. The big storm coming to shake the church of God that they may be shaken. Therefore, this is the hour that you don't need, you don't need to be an uh, ignorant Christian, a careless Christian, st- sitting idle without reading, without uh, the word of God, without praying. You need to be, build your life in prayer. You need to build your life in fasting and prayer to draw near to God because storms are coming and those storms cannot touch those who are in Christ. Those storms cannot touch those who call the name of our Lord God Almighty. It cannot touch the, those who call the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Because they are covered. They are protected by the presence of God. When you pray, when you fast, you walk with the glory of God. You walk, there is a, a crowd that walks with you and that crowd cannot be the, uh, ca- cannot be overcome by any storm that may be coming. Therefore, you need to be in prayer in this hour and into, into be fasting. Even that you don't know the day or the hour that our Lord Jesus Christ will be coming, so that you may be purified. Those who pray so much, those who fast so much, they are those who are holy, they are pure, they are righteous. Why? Because every time you are praying, you are repenting. Every time you are praying, you are you are you are made pure, you are made bright, made righteous, and you are enlightened by the light of God. Therefore, you need to be praying in this hour to avoid the darkness, the storm of darkness that should be coming in this hour. So that is what you need. And the Bible says in the book of Matthew 26, the Bible says here in the book of Matthew, in the book of Matthew it is 26, whereby you find that uh, Jesus Christ, in the book of Matthew 26, uh, 40, the Bible says this, Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Could you may not keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Uh, The spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Hallelujah. That you see that this is when Jesus Christ knew that that, uh, his time is already near. His time to be persecuted. His time to die. His time to be slain. His time to be uh, to, 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 to to be crucified is near, and that is the greatest time that uh, was uh, was having the uh, the greatest darkness because it was a night of darkness, and that is when the disciples were sleeping. And then Jesus went to Peter and told, told them and other disciples, "Could you not watch? Why could you not watch? Because uh, so that you may not fall into temptation." He said, "Watch and pray so that you." not fall into temptation see that you must be watching and praying so that you may not fall into temptation and you see because he did not uh, uh, because he did not uh, watch he will fall into the t- temptation if you don't watch you fall into the, to the temptation it is like somebody who is who is driving the car uh, in the highway on the highway you are driving the car on the highway and you are very careless and you are not you are not watching so any time something may come on the road, something may, 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 may come before you, something, something may appear ahead of you with your car and you can crash, you can, uh, you can find yourself that you, you have just got an accident. Why? Because you are not watching. That is what God is saying. Watch and pray. Watch the signs that are the end time. Watch the signs. Watch what God is saying. Pray so that you may not fall into temptation. You don't know what is ahead of you. You don't know what is coming in your life. You don't know your tomorrow. So you must be watchful as the Christ or as the church of God, as the preachers, as saints, as the bride of Christ. You must remain watching in this hour, watching in righteousness, watching in holiness, watching in in, in repentance, watching and praying. So this is why God is saying that watch and pray. Watch and pray. Watching. How can you watch? Watch through the word of God. Uh, be interested. Uh, uh, seek the word of God. Know what God is saying. Watch through the word of God. Watch the signs. Watch. Hear the Holy Spirit what he is speaking. And then pray so that you may not fall into temptation. Because I have seen a storm that is coming to shake Christian. Those who are ignorant. Those who are careless. Those who are not watching. Those who are not praying. They will be shaken. They will be, uh, they will be shaken and they will, uh, they will fall in this hour of testing. So this is why God is saying it is time to watch and pray. It is time to pray and to fast. To enter into fasting. To pray. 
praying for God to give you strength, praying for God to give you grace, praying for God to give you endurance, for God to give you our endurance and our strength and grace to overcome the storm that is coming. The storm is coming and I have seen a great storm, a great and a terrible uh, a storm that coming like a wind, like a wind to, the, uh, to shake the life of them that are sleeping, the life of the church of God that they may be awakened. And in the middle of this storm, Jesus Christ is coming. Jesus Christ will take his bride. He will just snatch with his bride because this is the time of testing. This is the time of trials that he may try, he may shake, he may see who is really the bride of Christ. Who is really the bride of Christ or you are the bride of the world. You love Jesus Christ. Why did you love Jesus Christ? Because you are of the money, because of the world, because of riches or you love Jesus Christ because of the kingdom of God. Why did you love? God is coming to test your life, to test your life and anything you have may become a storm in your life. Anything. Your wife may become a storm. Your husband may become your storm. Uh, your family you may become a storm. Your work may become a storm to shake you that you may open your eyes and you may be you may remain unshaken in this hour so hold the word of god pray and do not uh, do not fall pray and watch so that you may not fall into temptation why the spirit is willing but the flesh is too weak therefore do this if the flesh is too weak therefore you must know that the flesh and the spirit always they are at, at war therefore you must struggle the bible says that struggle to enter the kingdom of god this door is for them for it, it is for those who want to struggle to enter the kingdom of god and he, he said struggle to enter through the narrow way struggle to enter through the kingdom of god through the door that reads the kingdom of god therefore it is a matter of struggling with your body struggling with your weak flesh struggling and 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 kick and destroy and striking your body with the fasting and with the prayers and with the things of the kingdom of god build yourself in this hour because the storm is coming so you must be sincere you must be sincere search, searching god in this hour if you want to overcome and if you want to to, to stand where well in this hour of shaking in this hour that god is really saying therefore i want now to give number two what you should do dear christian what you should do dear brother to overcome the, the, how to overcome the coming storm the coming wind of shaking the coming wind of trials the coming wind to shake to test the church of god in this hour you need to know this my dear brother and my sister in order that you may stand still and you may stand unshaken by any uh, by, by nothing see now i want to say this number two hold the word of god hold the word of god in this time of shaking in this time of shaking you need to hold the word of god why this is the hour that of shaking like it was when you you remember Jesus Christ when he was tripping and uh, and his disciples they were on the boat let us read let us read in the book of of, of Matthew 7:24 Matthew 7:24 and 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 here Matthew 7:24 the bible says this the bible says this Therefore, everyone who hears those words of mine and put them into practice, into practice, uh, into practice, is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. Hallelujah! The rain comes down, the stream roars, and the weeds and the weeds brew and beat against the house. Yet it did not fall, because it had because it had its foundation on the rock. Hallelujah! It had its foundation on the rock. Praise the Lord Jesus. But everyone who hears those words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The slain come down, the stream lost, and the weed blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash, with a great falling. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord Jesus. The wise builders and the foolish builders. That is, is, is how the Bible is speaking about. So the way you can overcome this hour, it is to hold the word of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. It is to build your foundation on the word of God. Because those who hold the word of God and build their foundation and take the word of God in everything they are doing, they are the wise builders in this hour. Like, like, like a man who had built his house on the rock. And when there's, there's the storm come and the lane comes, 
Zika and Kim and brew and the weed brew the house. The house remained stunned. Hallelujah. The, the house did not was not shaken. The house remained uh, unshaken. Why? Because he had built his foundation on the lock, the word of God. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Put your hope in the word of God. Put your, uh, put your hope in the word of God. Put your faith in the word of God. You need to increase through faith. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Hold the word of God. Because those who are not holding the word of God, they don't have faith. If you have the word of God, you have faith. And those who have faith, they cannot be shaken. Why? Because when the, when the shaking is coming, when the weed is coming, they overcome. They are able to, dis, uh, uh, to, to overcome that weed, that shaking, because they hold the word of God. They are shaken. The, when you hold the unshaken word of God, you are holding the rock. You are like somebody who have built uh, his house or her house in the, uh, on the rock. And when the weed is coming, you remain unshaken. You cannot be destroyed. Hallelujah. The time of the storm that is coming, uh, the, the, the devastating storm is coming to destroy, to destroy, to brew out, uh, uh, to destroy the foundation. But those who hold their, uh, their life, those who, who have built their foundation in the word of God, will remain unshaken. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You need to draw near to God. You need to know God in this hour and to put your hope upon Jesus Christ. The reason why you can see that, that, that the people of this hour, the Christian of this hour are falling, it is because they have not put, they have not hold the word of God. They have not built their faith upon the word of God. They have hold their faith, they have kept their faith in the things of this world, in the riches of this world, in their marriages, in their families. And so when their marriages will be shaken, their hope is gone, their faith is destroyed. Hallelujah. You must hold you the uh, you must uh, uh, have the foundation of the word of God in your life. Build yourself not through these worldly things. Build yourself by the hope of the word of God, by the faith that comes through the word of God that when the foundation will be destroyed, when the foundation or will be destroyed, the word of God will not be destroyed. Hallelujah. You may be destroyed, your life may be destroyed, your marriage may be destroyed, your work, your children may be destroyed, the way your hopes may be destroyed, but those who hope upon the word of God, they will not be destroyed. Praise the Lord Jesus. This is why you need to be strong, holding the word of God, because those who hold the word of God, those who trust the word of God, they are people who cannot be shaken. They are giant in the spirit. They are people who have built themselves with power, with authority, through the word of God. Because they trust the word of God, they don't trust how you say. They trust the word of God, that if the word of God says this, that I call upon God and he will answer me, then they believe and it is, it, it is done upon their life. Praise the Lord Jesus. The reason why you are seeing that the people of today, they are falling because even they are deceived. It is because they are not putting their, 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 their foundation, their hope in the word of God. You see, I hear that now Christians, because you have gone uh, to this pastor, to other pastor, to other prophet, because you have gone there to there and you have not got your solution. Now you want to go to the witch, to the witches, so that you may got uh, you may you may find your solution uh, through witches. You have tried pastors, you have tried apostles, you have tried tried servants, and they have they have conned you, they have cheated you, they have all wasted you. Don't be deceived. Go to God. God is not deceived. If you have found that all the prophets that you have tested and you have tried, they have deceived you, go to God. God is not like a prophet. God is God and God says, call upon God and he will answer you. He did not say, go to the prophet, go to that one and he will answer you. He said, go, call to God and seek God and he will answer you. That is why people they are they are over uh, they are, they are, they are over over uh, they are overdrawing uh, they are they are, they are withdrawing they are withdrawing this faith they are withdrawing the salvation they are withdrawing their faith. Why? Because they are being discouraged by the prophets instead of going through the word of God instead of going to Jesus Christ who is the way who is the truth Hallelujah. 
how can you go to witches? How can you go now back to, to the world? Because you have been cheated by a pastor. Because you have been cheated by, uh, by a church. There is a God. There is a God. Even if they, they are all deceivers. Even if they are all the false prophets. There, there will remain to be a God in heaven. And they are the true prophets. Hallelujah. So you need to put your hold, your hope in the word of God. To put your foundation in the word of God. Hallelujah. That is why the Bible says we're here. That those who put their foundation in the rock, in the word of God, they are the people who have built their house on the rock. And when this shaking, when this weed will be coming, when we this storm will be coming, this gigantic storm, this gigantic storm that will be coming, they will remain unshaken. They will, not, they will not be shaken. The storm of deception are coming. The storm of deception, deceiving the church of God, deceiving the erected if it was possible. They are coming and those who do not put their hope in the word of God, those who do not underline and go step with step with the word of God, they will be lied, they will be deceived. The church that uh, the church that seeks after signs and miracles, they will be deceived. The church that seeks after the riches of this world, they, they will be deceived. The church that seeks after the riches, after the things of this world, they will be deceived by the devil. Because the devil has the sign and miracle. The devil has his own blessing that he's, he's blessing his people with those who, who, those who compromise with the world. Hold the word of God. Put your foundation, put your trust in the word of God, put your faith in the word of God. Be built up, build your life with the word of God. Build your life, build your life and remain to be strong, remain to be powerful, remain to be strong enough through the word of God and you shall be saved in this hour. That is why God is saying, that see, that the lane come down, the stream lost, and the weed brew, and the beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the lock. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the lock, on the word of God, the foundation in righteousness, the foundation in holiness. If your foundation in this hour as a Christian is not in holiness and righteousness, that foundation is a faulty foundation. That foundation will be destroyed and it will fall. That is the type of the foundation that God is saying that see the rain come down, the stream lost, and the weed brew, and the great and the beat uh, and it beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. Hallelujah. It fell with a great crash. Those who have built themselves with the wrath of this world, with the wrath of the materialistic, with the hope of being rich instead of the hope of the kingdom of God, those who build themselves upon those faulty hopes, they are those who build their, their house in the sand. And when this great storm, this great wind is coming, this great shaking, this great earthquake is coming, they will be shaken. And the Bible says well, that they will fall in a great crash. They will fall with a great crash. They will fall in a great falling. They are the one that falls and never rise again. Because they put their yeah, they trust in those prophets. They put their trust in those false prophets. They put their trust in those things of the world, in riches, in their money, in their family. But they did not put their trust in the word of God and to the true God of Israel, the God of Isaac, the God of Abraham, our Lord Jesus Christ. They did not. That is why God is saying, that my dear brother and my sister, put your power, uh, put your faith through the word of God. Put your faith in Jesus Christ and hold your faith so much. Because there are coming storm of deception, storms of falling, storms of discouragement, storm to, dis uh, to seduce you, storm to make you weak. But those who put their trust in the word of God, those who hold the word of God, hold obedience, hold righteousness, hold faithfulness, they will not be shaken. They will remain standing in this hour and they shall not be shaken. Hallelujah. So you need number two to hold the word of God. The other, the, the other point, the last point that you need, you need to be sensitive to sin. You need to be sensitive to sin in this hour. Those who are sensitive to sin, they walk very closely with God and they know when they sin. They are sensitive, they know when they sin. When sin comes in their life, when they feel guilty of their life, they go direct and they go, they pray and they go to repent and repent. They go and repent and, uh, 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 and confess their sin to God and they are healed. Be sensitive to sin. Be sensitive 
every time that there the, 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 every time that there is a root of sin in your life. There is a root of anger. There is a root of ha hatred. There is a root of sin in your life. You must be sensitive to know that you have that root in your life. And you pray and repent for your sin. You need to be sensitive at this hour. Because if you don't be sensitive at this hour, you will fall in the storm. You will fall in temptation. You will fall in sin. You will fall. You will fall in this hour because of lack of being sensitive and sensitive sensitive to sin you need to recognize sin when sin is approaching you need to recognize you need to recognize when you are not you are not right with god you need to recognize when you are falling short of the glory of god when you are falling short of the grace of god short of the presence of god you need to recognize yourself when you feel that the spirit of god is not with you you need to go Direct and seek the Spirit of God. Go direct and repent. You need to recognize yourself when you don't, you are not praying, when you are not fasting, when you are going, uh, when you are backsliding, when the root of backsliding is coming in your life. You need to recognize your life and repent and pray and seek God. Hallelujah. You need to recognize your life. You need to be sensitive to your life, to your spiritual life. If you don't be sensitive in your life, who else will be sensitive to, be, to your life? Who will care your life if you don't care your spiritual life? You need to be knowing your life. When you are growing uh, cold, when you are growing cold in your prayers, when you are going, growing cold uh, in, in your fasting, when you are going cold in the word, in the leading the word of God in obedience, you need to recognize yourself in order that you may keep, uh, you may keep up strong to the end and keep up strong preaching the gospel, uh, praying, doing everything, supporting, doing everything for the gospel of the living God. That is what God is saying, that you need to be sensitive to sin. The Bible says in the book of James 4, 7, the Bible says that resist the devil and he will be free from you. Let us read and see what God is saying. Because those who are, sens those who are sensitive to sin, they know the devil and they resist him. See, the Bible says this, the Bible says in the book of James 4, 7, the Bible says this, submit yourself then to God. See, submit yourself then to God and resist the devil and he will free fruit, uh, and he will learn away from you. He will free away from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, that you need to be sensitive and when the devil is approaching, you need to sub submit yourself to God. Submit yourself to the word of God. And he said, resist the devil and he will free from you. Resist sin. Sin is what comes with the devil. Sin is what uh, the devil arrives. When you see that the devil is coming in your life, know there is something where there is sin in your life. Sin is what draws the devil. Sin is what attracts the devil. Like how you can see that, uh, that a good flower is attracted by the bee. So, that is how it is. That if you are living a sinful life, a disobedient life, a lying life, an holy life, if you are living a sexual uh, sin life, a fornication life, you will attract the devil in your life. You will attract demons in your life. And this is why God said, submit yourself to God and resist the devil and he will free away from your life. Resist immorality. Resist every form of evil, every form of hatred, immorality, speaking evil against others. Stop it and resist the devil and he will free away from you. Resist your body. Resist the evil desires. Resist every kind of sin and the devil will free away from your life. That devil may be coming with that storm. But if you resist the devil, you resist the storm. You resist resisting the devil, resisting sin. You resist the tribes. You resist those things and you don't fall into temptation. Hallelujah. You need to submit to God and resist the devil. And the Bible says, come near to God and he will come near to you. Then come near to God and he will come near to, 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 uh, to you. You need to come near to God in this hour of temptation, in this hour of the storm. Only those who are near God will overcome this temptation. Only those who are near God will overcome the storm. Those who are with God, they are at the, in the hand of God. They are holded by the hand of God 
and they cannot be shaken because the hand of God is with them. Therefore, the Bible says that go near to God and he will come near to you. You need to go near to God. Draw near to God in fasting. Draw near to God in holiness. Draw near to God in prayers. Draw near to God in righteousness and God will draw near to you. The Spirit of God, the protection, the angels that are sent to administer you, the angels that are sent to protect you, they will be near to you if you near God and if you free eye from sin and avoid every form of sin in this hour. That is what God is saying. That in this hour, for you to overcome, for you to hold and to overcome this storm, because this storm is coming, and this storm is the last storm that is coming for the, to the church of God. To shake the church of God, if they are sleeping, they will be left sleeping. If they, they be awakened, they will be, uh, they will be taken by our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the time of the storm that is storming the world, uh, the, the world that is storming the churches, that is storming the Christian, that they may be wakened. And God is saying, hold the word of God, pray and fast, hold the word of God, be sensitive to sin and avoid sin at all costs. And you shall overcome this storm that is coming. Because Jesus Christ, the son of God, he is coming and time is almost uh, finishing. Now, God is saying, like he acted when the storm uh, 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 he heated the, the, the disciples, when the storm attacked the, the disciples, also that, that is what God is saying, that the storm storm is coming again that those who call upon the name of the living God they may call him and they will be asan and they will be uh, they will be saved so prepare because the kingdom of God is near and Jesus Christ the son of God is near and anytime you can be taken anytime the church of God can be taken can be raptured in the midst of this storm uh, in the midst of this storm Jesus Christ can, can, can come in the midst of this shaking Jesus Christ will take his church his church that is shaken that has remained to be holy remained to be righteous the church that is unshaken that will be raptured that is the holy church Brimless church, a church that is strong and powerful. So may you prepare the way and prepare your life and remain st strong in this hour of shaking. Amen. May God bless you. May God you grace to overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen.